Wrap those presents, tie that bow. Let me hear ya. Ho, ho, ho. Two, four, six, eight. Hurry, Santa. Don't be late. Three, five, seven, nine. Don't you just love Christmas time? You do. You do. You go, you go, you do. That thing scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I shouldn't say crap. That thing's scared. Now look, we've had enough of you. Well, here I am strolling through a second-hand store and I come upon this wonderful vanity which would date to uh, right around 1930, late 20s into the mid-30s. Very typical of uh, that era. You know, you see the dark veneer. It's not really... This is that 19, late 20s, early 30s furniture that's not really trying to copy anything. Uh, it's not really Art Deco. Uh, it's not traditional. I guess if you look at the bottom, you'll see those um, bulbous legs there, at least on the front of the piece, which is looking a little Jacobean. But for the most part, this is just that typical 20s, 30s furniture. Uh, I like it. And now back in another thrift shop. Uh, let's see. I believe I'm in uh, a town in New Jersey here. A shop that I don't normally go to. This particular one. These, if you look closely, you'll see uh, it's amethyst glass. Uh, and those are the punch cuffs. You see the, the little hooks on the end there? I don't know how well you can see it. So those would hang around the rim of the punch cup. I didn't buy them because they were expensive. I'm waiting to see if they go on sale. And I don't have an amethyst punch bowl, so... I decided to leave them where they are. I guess maybe that's Hazel... Uh, probably Hazel Atlas. They made so much of the amethyst glass. Now, I do actually buy a few things from this store. Uh, you'll see a couple of them today, but I'm going to come back and do a thrift haul tomorrow and actually show you everything that I bought. Here's a few cups and saucers. I just wanted to show you the prices in this particular store. And, uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> I pull. I don't remember what that stuff is called, but I think almost every uh, wedding gift, every every bridal shower, I think in around 1962, 63, 64, uh, got that stuff. I know there's plenty of it in my mother's attic. We never used it. I don't remember ever eating off of it, and I don't think my mother cared for it, but uh, you probably recognize that pattern. I forget what it's called. Ice cream sundae glasses over there. Mm, let's see. Oh, more blue willow. Boy, I was. I've been finding so much blue willow the last few days. I just wanted to show those to you. I think it was the Churchill uh, brand made in England, which is pretty pretty new. Dishwasher safe. Uh, here's a mid-century pattern, and I. Th uh, is it called harp or is it called lyre? I can't remember. You see there's like a little musical harp on there. I think it's called harp. There's some more Franciscan at the bottom. And again, I just kind of wanted to show you the prices to give you an idea. This this store is a little a little pricey, I think. And this is the how much are those? 
Eh, six dollars. Without the saucers. This is the made in USA, so it's the older stuff. Not the Franciscan uh, made in England. More dinnerware from the 50s and 60s. Ah, now, this is unmarked, um, but it's Homer Lachlan, and it's actually not Riviera. It's the same shape, but Riviera is never decorated. When it's decorated, it's called Century. So that's actually the Century shape uh, by Homer Lachlan, same company that made Riviera. And if there were no decoration on it, and it was the Riviera colors, then it would be Riviera. That wasn't confusing. I think that was confusing. Oh, uh, is that Madrid in, in uh, amber? I sometimes, that's a pretty common set as well. I find that quite often. And, and it's usually chipped. Not, not a big sell, seller. And you know, uh, I just went through so much depression glass. I decided to take a break, a little, a little bit of a break from the, from eh, the common depression glass. Oh, oh, oh! What's in that cart? Well, I'm going to show you that stuff uh, on tomorrow's thrift haul. I'll do, I'll do a, a kitchen counter thrift haul for you tomorrow. Show you what's in the cart. You got a little sneak peek. This is a big store. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's that old bride's box. I don't usually see it in clear glass. I usually see it in milk glass or that pink color that they call, uh... Oh, what did they call that pink? Not salmon. Hmm, something shell. I think they call it shell. Now there's a piece of depression glass in blue. And that's either, uh, I want to say that's an L.E. Smith plate or platter, L.E. Smith or, uh, uh, or Hazel Atlas, I can't remember. And it, it was nice, but it was priced, I would have liked to have gotten it for a couple of dollars less. Glass pitcher up there, probably, I guess that's Anchor Hawking. with the uh, gay fad decoration uh, on it. And uh, let's see. Oh, now, uh, student lamp shade. Look closely. What I was looking for to see if this was cased glass uh, rather than just painted cased meaning uh, a layer of opal glass on the inside and a separate layer of green glass on the outside this one isn't and if you look closely you can see right there it's painted now that's the way it was made so the quality is not as good as if it's a cased piece of glass but those swirl shades still do well that wasn't bad for five dollars um, I could have bought that but I've got some of those uh, and I just did not need a, another one. If it had been, as I said, the case glass, I probably would have purchased it. A little New Jersey plate there. Yes, I am in New, in New Jersey in this store. Mm, oh, a little lemon server. And there's the... We are just talking about Noritake yesterday. The M for Mora... Mori Brothers with the wreath. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a 1920s, 30s piece. Uh, that was nice for $3. And a uh, Christmas plate. I think that's Lefton. They are uh, gr uh, green and yellow. Green and yellow. I always forget too. 
I, I try. I memorize it in the front of the store, and when I get shopping, I forget. I do too. Yeah, I green. Think, I think you're right. Yeah. Green and yellow. Green and yellow. Thank you. You're welcome. I think you're right. I always get the wrong color. I do too. <laughs> green and yellow Never today. <laughs> Oh, now I would have bought this if uh, the creamer was with it. 1940s sugar bowl. I probably should have gotten it anyway because it has its lid and it was only $4. Uh, um, I want to say Harker, but off the top of my mind, I just cannot remember who made that. That's a popular pattern and it was imitated by more than one company. I, I just can't remember. I kind of wish I had gone ahead and bought that 1940s uh, sugar bowl, but uh, I'm going to make up for it here. Oh, I can't wait to show you these tomorrow. When, uh, once they are out of the bag and all cleaned up. In fact, they're already out of the bag and all cleaned up, but you're going to have to wait. That is just about as Art Deco as it gets. And I'm going to talk a lot more about those when we look at them closely tomorrow. And I paid $6.00. For the creamer and the sugar bowl with its lid. I guess I'm giving away the whole secret here, although this isn't a murder mystery. You can see it's called uh, Triumph Hollywood. What a wonderful name, Hollywood. And I can just see Myrna Loy making her coffee with that. Yeah, in the Thin Man movies. Sebring uh, Pottery in Ohio. Is that Liverpool, Ohio? I don't remember. But we'll, we'll see them close up tomorrow. Well, I'm not done fiddling. What am I doing? I guess I put them in my cart. Uh, my uh, basket. Oh, there's uh, Iris by Jeanette. Also called Herringbone by Collectors. Some of that stuff, it was, is, was reproduced, so look out. I don't know, this just was, I thought the cowboy on the front was sort of vintage looking. Uh, I don't know, I guess this is probably new. I turned it upside down, didn't see anything, and didn't recognize it. So I decided to leave it on the shelf. This was late in the day and I had been out for quite some time and I was actually not planning on stopping in this uh, store. Ooh, do you see what's in my cart? You'll see in just a second. I'm going to show you what's in my cart. Ah, now don't get too excited. Look at this. I shouldn't have picked it up like that. I know you're screaming at me. All right, we see the Moriage, Moriagi decoration on the top. Oh, it's 1910 Noritake. Wow, beautiful. Mmm, wait a minute. Something's fishy about the detail, the painting. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Made in China. That thing is brand new. So watch out. And this is where, uh, you know, if that, if, that lay, if that little sticker on the bottom weren't there... You might be fooled, but really take a look. Notice there's no depth in, in the uh, painting on the... Well, I guess I'm not going to let you see. Oh, we're going to go back to it. A nice little uh, cast, uh, covered vegetable bowl there. Probably dates to about 1920. I like the look of that. What does it say? Maytime pattern. Uh, made expressly for Spear and Company. I don't know Spear and Company of Pittsburgh and New York. I like that covered vegetable bowl. But let's look at this thing again. Just look at the sort of one-dimensional uh, painting on the front of that. It's just... Eh, the quality isn't there. Now look at this. Here's another one, and I'm at a different shop. I got in the car and went to another shop. I'm at another shop in New Jersey. Check this out. Check this out. Made in China. Boy, they are trying to pull a fast one on us, aren't they? Mm. Okay, 
who remembers blonde furniture? <laughs> who had blonde furniture at their grandparents' house? I don't ever remember either of my grandparents having blonde furniture. They were the mahogany type of people. But, you know, this stuff came on the scene actually in, in the 1930s now. This set right here is from the 40s. It is classic late 40s, probably made after the war. I would date this to around 1947, 48, something like that. Even into the very early 50s. But look at the design. It's modern. It's clean. It's the, it's what's hot in the 40s. And ooh, look, 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 look. Are you kidding me? Please don't tell me the buffet and the sideboard. Are they here? Oh my goodness. It's a whole set. Now, whether you like it or not, you've got to clap your hands that this has stayed together since about ooh, the time Frank Sinatra came on the scene. Uh... He actually came on the scene in the late 30s. But look here, and it has sort of an Asian look to the front. Nobody took the old hardware off. Incredible there. You put your silverware. Now, of course, these are all for the dining room. It's very well made. I love that the original ha uh, 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 <laughs> handles are still on there. What am I trying to say? Hardware. Oh, it's wonderful. And the condition is good. It's great to see it. Now, I did not see a china closet. There probably was one with it, and that's that seems to be the only thing missing. I'm trying to back up so you can get a better look of it, look at it. That's what I'm doing now. And there you'll see the long uh, buffet and then the little server. So both pieces for your dining room. And uh, we, uh, we always think of Haywood Wakefield and, uh, oh, Broyhill and companies like that. Bassett, they made uh, blonde furniture. It wasn't just Haywood Wakefield. I looked at this and couldn't find a maker's mark anywhere. But look at this, $75 for the table and five chairs. Okay, somehow we're missing a chair. But you've got your leaves. Let's not look at that brown stuff there. Um, nice. Now, here's the stuff that would have been, you know, in a lot of homes too in the 1940s and 50s here were very traditional. Mm-hmm, that old mahogany stuff. Very traditional 1940s and 50s. $60. The prices are very reasonable in this uh, thrift store, and I love going here because of the furniture that I find. It's just it's just fun to walk through and now that that blonde stuff is actually called blonde oak. It's oak wood or oak veneer, and it's just I'm happy to see it. Not that lamp. Ooh, get away from that lamp. Get away, lamp. That was tacky. I hope you're doing well today, and that this video pleasantly accompanies you with whatever you may be doing. First, I promised. A funny story about my nemesis. Now, it's all in good fun. Yes, I do have a nemesis, and I should probably introduce myself. I bet she and I would have a wonderful time and go have lunch together, and I'll save that for another day. This, when I say my nemesis, she pops up everywhere. I can drive 90 miles out of town into the tiniest little northeast Pennsylvania uh, borough, even in the foothills of the mountains, and there she'll be. Well, that's fine. I don't get annoyed, but when I see her, I go, she's going to get the good stuff. Well, every once in a while she pops up at one of my favorite thrift shops, and just a few days ago, I arrived early in the morning, and there she was. I saw her peering through the shelves just two or three feet away from me. Well, something that I always do when I see her is um, I figure out which way she's headed. In other words, which directions she's headed in the aisle. And I don't dare get into the same aisle 
but I will jump into the next aisle where she hasn't already had a chance to get the good stuff. I mean, why should I go behind her? She's already collected everything that I want. So on this particular day, I saw her and I jumped into the next aisle very quickly. And as soon as I did, <laughs> I found this. Now, you guys all recognize, what is it? Pink butter print, that's right. Pink butter print uh, Pyrex. I think the price tag is still on it. I paid $5 for it. And I don't usually say mint condition, but I'll tell you what, my good friends, I think that this was put away in the kitchen cabinet somewhere and never used. I can't believe you'd ever find one in any better condition than this. Well, I snatched it, and because I'm not a huge Pyrex fan, I, I know it has value, and I do sell it. It's from the 50s and 60s and 70s. I had no idea. I thought, ooh, $30. $25, maybe $38. Do you know what these sell for on a regular basis? Let's take a look. Woohoo! <laughs> so, on that particular day, jumping ahead of my nemesis really paid off. Wow. As I said, it's all in good fun. And uh, I wish her well. And uh, I'm glad that she's able to find uh, interesting things to sell or to collect because there's plenty of it to go around for all of us.